Okay, so continuing our composite, we brought in some some references for the back foot, for the tail. Um, these are just potentials. And I like that foot. It gives it a little bit more shape and space. I think I'm going to continue that and maybe bring in another possibility for the tail, which is this prehistoric feature. This is just a quick reminder. No matter how large that reference is, come on. Troubling, it's already slowing down on me. No matter how large that reference is, you want to do a rough cut of it and duplicate it onto its own layer. Hmm. Really rough cut for now since my back is delaying on me. And then you hit duplicate, which on my Mac is just Command J. And that will immediately rasterize the copy of what you selected, and then I can delete the smart layer underneath because it's the smart layer that has the most pixel data. And I'm actually going to try using Magic Wand. Yeah, Mr. Fry, your mic's really muffled. Uh -oh. All right. So when I overtax my machine a little bit, it might lag. And that's probably going to affect the mic quality as well. So I'll just try to be very deliberate. So I'm going to use the magic wand and try to select out this blank background. But in order to do that, I have to make sure contiguous is checked. Otherwise, it's going to select that kind of greenish tan color everywhere in the image at once. And I only want it to select it where it's touching. And then hit delete. And you can see I lose a little bit of quality that way. So that's the danger. I, I lose some aspects. So that can be the danger of relying on these quicker selection methods. Rather than, you know, cutting it out pixel by pixel. But, yeah, I don't want to do that. But I'm going to cut away some of it, which I know... I don't need. And it, it might leave little debris around. So I wanted to show this because this is the, the culprit usually of having stray pixels that have to be cleaned up at the end. And I'm thinking I will use this. So how do I do that? So you can kind of see there are stray pixels left just because I used the magic wand. Whereas if I used my lasso, especially if I feather it, you know, maybe one or two pixels, I can get a really nice cutout. I know I don't want that eye on my tail, so I can just delete that. I want to create a new edge there, and I'll show you how I can replace that later. And then for these parts of the tail, I'm just going to trim it. Make my own shape. And I'm feathering two pixels so it's just barely softened. And I want a nice cutout here. And 
And when it comes time, I can zoom in and really fine tune that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit Control T within Photo P. And I don't need a tail to be this large. So I can hold down shift to shrink it without distorting it. And I think I want it about that size for now. And I'm going to need to connect it to the spine eventually, but not yet. Okay, and now the other reference I wanted to bring in is this front claw. I could just copy and paste that claw, but that would be probably just a little boring. So better to have something with a lot of character like this claw. So I wanted to show you these different aspects. So these are not from Pixabay. These are copyrighted uh, clip art. You know, so it has that watermark on it. It's high resolution, but it has this watermark to kind of warn you not to use it, right? And we're going to use our skills to take away the watermark and to kind of break that intention. And I'm being pretty brazen because I'm putting this on YouTube, right? Not paying for this clip art. Of course, the clip art company makes money by licensing this image. So if I did want to use this image and not have to worry about making it unrecognizable or even changing it in any way, I could just purchase it from them. But I am educating you on what to keep in mind when using such sources that are copyrighted, you know, so clearly copyrighted. Oops. I'm going to find that new layer and then place it on. And because we've had the, the weekend between when we worked on this last, or at least since I've demoed it, this gives us a chance to remember a lot of the techniques that we were working with. Okay, so the first is placement, right? Placement and scale. Placement and size. Remember the silhouette. And then you have a lot of control that you wouldn't have with traditional collage. I can distort it. So I'm going to make this a little bit foreshortened, a little bit bigger at the bottom. So it feels like it's coming towards us a little bit. And then at the back, I can tug at it a little bit and make it a little bit wider to match the anatomy of those thick forearms that I want. It's using distort and warp. Now I can match the color and the lighting. So I start with lighting. I go to image adjustments, levels. And I'm going to deepen the midtones. I'm going to brighten the highlights just a tiny bit and maybe limit the shadows so that it matches the lighting of what I have before I cut it out better. Now I'm going to play with the color and I'm going to go right to hue saturation and see if just shifting the hue a little bit more towards the blues works and it doesn't. It makes it way too crazy. So hue saturation, it's kind of the big guns for color, color changing. So I might change it a tiny bit, a little bit in that direction. But otherwise, I want something more subtle, and that's to make it look like it's lit the same way. It has the same color temperature as the, the rest of the chest. So that is going to be done with color balance. I'm going to start with mid-tones, and I'm going to up the blue. 
And I'm also going to take the highlights and I'm going to up the yellow a little bit by moving the red and green forward. Oh, that's supposed to be highlights. There we go. You see now those colors are starting to match a little bit better. And then I can go to shadows and maybe just goose the blue a little bit in the shadows. There we go. So the subtlety of it. You know, without those changes, it just doesn't feel like it fits as well. Then I can blend it in because I have that hard edge there that I want to get rid of. And so that hard edge, I'm going to take my eraser, I'm going to change it always in brush mode to being 0% hardness, large enough so I can see it like a pencil eraser. I'm going to start at 100% opacity and take out that hard edge so I can start blending scales into scales. So now I go to a lower opacity and maybe a slightly harder brush, but not much. That's smaller. And now I can work one row of scales into the next. I was taking a little bit out. And then I'll make that a little bit bigger. Just hit it a couple times. You can always go backwards if it's too much. All right, so that looks good. I like that claw. You can do the same thing with this back foot. You turn off that tail element so I can see it. So this is tricky, that back foot. First, I want to place it. So Control T. You can do a whole lot with just your placement and your scaling, right? And if I right click inside it, I can pull it just like I did with the other hand, change its proportions a little bit in a way that I like. And let's see. If I can get the back end of this foot to kind of match up with my anatomy a little bit better, like so, just by warping that edge. Then I can try that on the inside edge as well. So it's like rolling dough. I don't want to ruin the, the foot, you know, like make that look too weird. I'm kind of pushing everything together into place using the little anchors that are given with the warp tool. Okay, so that makes a big difference. Now, of course, the color's all wrong, the lighting's a little wrong. So I go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and I'm going to brighten the midtones, but limit the highlights. So it kind of matches this softer light at the back. Okay, then we go to color. I'm going to go to hue saturation first this time because there's some big shifts here. And I basically want to take it into the warms. Something like that but not so much that it becomes monochrome. And then I can go to color balance and I'm going to bring out the blues and the shadows. And then the highlights are going to bring out the reds. And then 